I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. And on this channel, I take photographs of outer space, but I've made a few enemies that make my job a nightmare. The evil driveway streetlight of death. The sinister scheming moon. And the blinding city lights of despair. Luckily, the folks at Altair Astro sent me a secret weapon to help combat my foes. So, was it strong enough to triumph? Find out in today's episode of... Fight! Altair is a company from the UK that makes a wide variety of filters, astronomy cameras, telescopes, and other astronomy accessories. I spoke with somebody from Altair a few months ago, and they asked if I would review a filter, and of course I said yes, so they sent me this right here. This is a six nanometer dual narrow band filter. Now, no money was exchanged hands, and they have no influence on what I have to say about this filter right here. That being said, after speaking to somebody from Altair for a while, I really appreciate their passion and their pride in what they do, and one of the ways they really stand out in that is on all their certified filters this is a certified filter they actually run a test on the filter and then include the test chart with your filter this may be hard to see but this is the actual test that they ran on my filter and i think that's incredible i've never seen a company do that before I'll get into more of the specifics of this filter in just a second, but I just want to kind of compare this to something that's more popular out right now. It would be the probably the Optolong L Extreme filter, which is a seven nanometer bandpass filter, while this is a six nanometer bandpass filter. The Optolong L Extreme in its two inch version goes for about 309 US dollars, whereas this filter goes for about 165 pounds or about 210 US dollars. That's $100 cheaper. And with international shipping, it actually ends up being more like 250 US dollars, which is still $50 cheaper than the Optolong. And let me just say, after using this for a few months, I, that's a steal for, for us uh, outside of the UK. This is incredible. Now, if you're new to astrophotography and you don't quite know what these dual narrowband filters are, basically they block out almost all light except for two specific colors. One is hydrogen alpha light, which is in the red spectrum, and oxygen three light, which is kind of the teal spectrum. And everything else gets blocked out. This is a six nanometer filter. So the smaller that number, the less light it lets in. And this is a pretty narrow band pass. It lets in very little light. So it's really good for light pollution. But I live out in the country and light pollution is typically not a problem for me, except for that driveway street light. But this filter does more than just block out light pollution. Have you ever tried to take a photo of, let's say, the Veil Nebula, and the image was so full of stars you couldn't see the nebula at all? Well, this filter helps with that too. It helps separate your actual nebula, your target, from the background sky, and it keeps the stars nice, small, and tight. For me personally, I probably wouldn't go much lower than six nanometers because once you get lower than that, you have a hard time seeing the stars and your plate solving software might not work. And my ASI Air might have a hard time polar aligning. These filters are really good at picking up emission nebulae and stars that died or exploded. Those are called planetary nebulae because they emit their own light, usually in hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. Now galaxies and reflection nebulae, those are broadband full color spectrum targets. So these block out a little bit too much light for those. So they're not the perfect filter, but they're great for a lot of targets out there. These little filters usually screw directly into part of your imaging train, usually in the flattener or reducer of your telescope, but also into a filter drawer somewhere in your imaging train or attached directly to your DSLR camera. They do make filter holders and filter drawers for some DSLR cameras. So if specifically you're a Canon shooter and you shoot with lenses, you might still be in luck. I've had this filter for about two months now and I've had plenty of time to experiment with it. So let's go all the way back to the day I got the filter in the mail and let's see what it can do. So I got the filter in the mail just a few hours ago and of course I had to just rip it open immediately. So if this was an unboxing video, I already screwed it up. And so here's what was in the package. First of all, got a little bit of candy here. Now this is what we actually want right here. Got our filter right here. 
Astrophotographers kind of have a joke where when you get some kind of new gear in, you can expect cloudy weather for the next three weeks. Well, that didn't happen this time. It's clear outside and it's gonna be clear for the next several nights. Now the moon's not really out and I live kind of out in the country, Bortle 3 area, so it's not much light pollution. So I won't really be putting the filter through its paces tonight, but I'm just gonna go out there and have fun with it. We're gonna shoot a little bit with the filter out and we're gonna put the filter in and then compare the difference between the two. And for the most part, just really enjoy that filter. My target tonight is going to be Cygnus Loop or the Veil Nebula. I like to test these kind of filters out on that target because you can really see all this rich hydrogen alpha and oxygen three and even the separation between the two. It's a really beautiful target for testing these kind of filters out. So let's get out there and do that. For tonight's shoot, we're gonna be using the Radian 61 telescope, which is now discontinued, but it's a 275 millimeter focal length apochromatic refractor telescope. On the back, I've got an Astro modified Canon T5i or 700D. It's been modified to pick up more light in the hydrogen alpha spectrum, which is gonna be great with this filter. And of course, I'll be auto guiding and everything is on top of the EQ6R Pro and I'm controlling everything with an ASI Air. All right, guys, we're about to wrap up a 180 second shot with no filter, and we're gonna see what this looks like. There we go. You can definitely see the veil in there. There are a lot of stars in this frame. I mean, a lot. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take a five minute shot with no filter as well and see what that looks like. All right, we're about to see the results of a five minute shot with no filter. There we go, it doesn't really look all that different from the three minute shot. All right, let's go ahead and put that filter in now. All right, we're about to see our first shot with the filter at three minutes. This is gonna be a three minute exposure with the filter in. Wow, just look at that. The stars are so much smaller and tighter, and you can see so much detail in the Veil Nebula. I'm loving it. Going ahead and uh, taking a five minute test shot now, and we'll see what that looks like in just a few minutes. And here comes our five minute shot. Oh, just look at that. The stars did not get any bigger, any more bloated. They look amazing. And I've got so much more detail in this nebula now. Well, so far the filter has performed extremely well out here in the country under dark skies, but I want to put it through its paces. So I'm gonna jump in the car, I've already got my gear loaded up, and we're gonna go into downtown Clarksdale, the nearest town to me, so let's go. All right, here we are downtown. Let me show you what the shots are looking like. Let's turn this exposure down a little bit so you can actually see. Just look at that. This is two minute exposures. Any more than that, I feel like I'm gonna start having problems just because not only are we downtown, but that moon is really bright. And if I tap on this, I can actually see some pretty bad banding on the bottom of the screen, but I don't think that's because of the filter. I've, I've actually seen this in shots way before I ever got this filter. I am worried though that it's gonna get worse throughout the night, so we're probably not gonna image too long anyway. It's downtown, it's not really safe sitting out here with all this equipment. But if you just look at that, the center of this, and by the way, this is the Elephant Trunk Nebula, and I'm still seeing a pretty good bit of detail. This is pretty amazing. I'm very impressed. If I can get a half hour to an hour on this, I'll be happy. But yeah, I'm definitely not gonna be sitting out here for a very long time. This is, this is just kind of shady. Shooting last night downtown was pretty fun, but I'm not quite sure how it turned out yet. The first 30 minutes looked great, then after that things got hazy and it, it almost looked like clouds came out, but there was no way I could tell because I could not see anything above me, except for maybe the moon and Jupiter. Well, tonight I'm back home, back in the backyard, and ready to shoot. This is gonna be probably my last test with this filter for a while. And this test is going to be with a brand new camera I just got today. Well, it's not a new model, but I bought it brand new today. It's the ZWO294MC Pro. It's my first cool astronomy camera, and I'm gonna get first light on it 
tonight with this Altair filter. Now, last night the moon was 92% illuminated and tonight it's even brighter. So I'm gonna shoot that way because the moon is that way. So I'm probably gonna be shooting something in Cygnus or Cassiopeia. I'm kind of thinking the North American Nebula. It's just something simple. I'm trying out new things and I don't wanna mess up. So this is what we're doing tonight. <laughs> so up there, we've got the moon, almost full Jupiter, and a very bright street light in the driveway. But right now, we're about to see the results of a three minute exposure. All right, it's loading. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Holy mother of God. I gotta I got put the camera down and, and just stare at this for a minute. Wow. This happened under a full moon. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, yeah, I gotta stare at this for a little while. So those three tests aren't the only tests I did. I also shot the Horsehead Nebula, and that contains the troublesome star Alnitak, which is very bright and can cause halos or flares with some filters, but I had zero issues with any halos or flares with this filter and also their other filter called the L Pro Max. I actually combined data from both of those filters to create an image with a lot more hydrogen alpha. I took several other photos with this filter as well, all of them with the moon out. So I'm gonna share those with you in just a few minutes. Could I think of anything bad to say about the filter? Well, no, not really. I mean, I don't have a huge filter collection to really compare it to, but I, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. I mean, the only thing I can think of is I feel sorry for the people in the UK that have to pay so much more for it than we do over here. That's kind of a drag, especially because Altair is a UK company. And also for us astrophotographers in the USA, we can't find it on websites like High Point Scientific or Agena Astro. And so that's kind of a drag, but you can still get it right from Altair's website. And I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description below, along with just a link to their general website so you can check out all the cool stuff they have to offer. This has now officially become my main dual narrowband filter. And I have a feeling I'm gonna be using it for a long time. All right, everybody, that about wraps it up for this video. We're gonna see if this filter really did triumph over all the light pollution problems. If you like this video, give me a like. Definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I wanna give a special shout out and thanks to my new patrons. I just started a Patreon, and you guys are so fun to chat with on Discord, and I hope to see you over there. Please sign up if, you are, if you're interested in supporting this channel. Okay, everybody, as always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes, and we'll see you in the next one. Fight! Fight!